There we go. Ashley, can I go? Yeah. Okay. My bad. You were born three days after Columbine. CNN was blaring in the background as you slipped into the hands of the midwife and did not make a sound for the first 10 seconds of your life. In those 10 seconds, you realized there is so much more color in the earth than there is in your mother's womb. And only then did you cry. When New York City turned to ash on America's lips in 2001, you were just learning how to ball your hand into a fist. You were always crushing berries, the sticky blood of raspberries constantly on your fingers. When George Bush declared the war on terror, you had fueled enough strength inside yourself to rip apart a strawberry. You had the seeds stuck under your nails for days. Your next door neighbor caught the swine flu right after you turned 10. Your father asked you to pray for her and you asked why in return. And you were sent to bed early that night. After that, you stopped praying, you flinched at the sound of the amen during grace every night, and by 12, you had decided to respectfully not believe, believe in a god. It was in between Bin Laden's death and the shooting in Aurora, Colorado, when you found yourself stuck in a dark, confusing void. You weren't sure if you were a lesbian atheist or just a much too lonely girl. All you wanted was some comfort, and the scars on the deliberately hidden parts of your body what needed to fade. You regretted putting them there. Newtown, Connecticut was flogged by the butt of Adam Lanza's rifle the day your Christmas break started. You cried on the school bus as you heard the radio recite the names of the 21st graders who'd been gunned down. And after watching Bowling for Columbine twice that night, you emailed all your friends and asked them to braid funeral pyres into their hair. And it was the summer before you started high school that you realized you had begun to care more about the American tragedies than you did your own personal ones. Maybe it was selfless, but it sure wasn't healthy. You looked under your clothes and, the, and noted the scars had not faded. You looked to your ceiling and remembered your an unanswered prayers. And I just dirt under a god's fingernails, you asked. But you knew no one would know the answer.